A chill breeze slithered among the trees, the buildings. Its touch on his skin, like that of a corpse long since devoid of living warmth, promised a deep, bitter, cold noise. Detective Ryan Nicholson pulled his jacket closer, a feudal effort. The frigid air seems to pass through his clothes and body to grip his heart. Or maybe it's just his thoughts freezing him to the bone, he muses darkly. He cast a quick glance around the street of his small mountain town community. One of the main roads. It should be showing signs of life even at this hour. But there is no one, not even a few wandering vagrants, dare spend their nights alone anymore. The murders have driven everyone inside to seek safety in numbers. Not that that's been helping any much. The deaths keep piling up. The detective swears to himself at the thought and quickens his pace, longing to get away from this deathly code as quick as possible. Nine deaths so far, brutal and horrific crime scenes. The tortured victims obviously died slowly and painfully, but no evidence could be found. No witnesses could be located, despite signs that the people had screamed themselves dry at the time of their deaths. 31 years old, Detective Ryan Eccleston was quite young for his position. He had risen quickly, however, due to his uncanny ability to get inside the psychology of those criminals who he hunted, sometimes too deeply, he thinks angrily, shoving unwanted memories from his mind. Dark of hair combined with striking deep, almost black brown eyes. He excluded a quite yet forceful charisma that inevitably wrung confessions from those who found themselves caught after relentless pursuit. This case had stonewalled him though, as it had every other detective, specialist, beat cop and private investigator who had been called in to find a solution. Nine different people, no visible similarities, different times with absolutely no criminal evidence left behind. Almost none, he thinks although most of his fellow investigators have dismissed it. A seemingly inane bit of information, yet it presented by at least one person questioned after the murders. A tune, a strange quiet song heard during the noise of the murder. None of the people questioned could remember it, just that it was slow, that it caused an inexplicable uneasiness, that's all. Pointless, he thinks as he finally reaches the police station and begins climbing the stairs to its wide double doors, yet it's stuck in its mind, like a thorn he can't remove. Pausing at the entrance, he turns and looks over the quiet, fearful town. A strange feeling begins to wash over him, a certainty that freezes him to the spot and makes his bowels feel like lead in his body. Something is happening here, something big. Events vast and terrible are beginning to move forward through the darkness, and we are powerless to stop them. We'd be all better off running and fleeing for our lives. Shaking his head, he turns and enters the police station, slamming the doors against the innocent moaning wind. It was only his imagination and lack of sleep, he thinks, that caused the passing air to have such a disturbing and malicious edge. edge. edge.